Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, whether you are gathered at home with your family or at one of the Numa locations throughout the city, um, we are so, so happy that you could join us today. I'm so grateful to have you here today. Um, as we go into today's service, um, there's just one thing that I'd like to share with you. Um, during this week, during our life group discussions, we spoke about um, how we are made in the image of God. Um, and I think one thing that really stood out for me is that as a result of being made in God's image, we have the wonderful opportunity to be in relationship with Him. Not only that um, we pursue Him, but also His heart for us and the fact that He pursues us so intently. And I pray that that is what you keep in mind as we go into today's service. So let's pray. Dear Lord God, thank you that you are good faithful, kind and true. Thank you that we can trust in you. Thank you that you are reliable, Lord God. Um, we pray that you'd be with us throughout the service today. Um, we also just want to say thank you for your grace upon our lives, Father God, especially with what's happening in Cape Town. Um, thank you for the grace that you've given us to be generous as well towards others um, and to see your heart for others as well. Um, we pray that you be with us throughout today's service and um, that we fellowship, um, well, not only with you, Father God, but even with the people around us and um, that we'd have fun, Father God, that there'd be joy, liberty and peace, Father God, because that is who you are and that we would, um, our hearts would be filled with love today, Father God. Um, thank you so much for all that you've done for us, for who you are to us. Um, and we just pray, as I said, that you be with us throughout the service, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. Um, thank you for the opportunity to worship you today. It is truly such an honor. Uh, we love you, Jesus, with all of our hearts. Amen. Breathe deep and know that he is good. 
good is a love like no
Everybody. Welcome to church. My name is Russell and I'm so excited to be here with my beautiful, gorgeous, stunning wifey, of course, yes, Bulelo, yes. aka Blue. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that aka in there or she was going to kill me. So yeah, we're so excited. Welcome to Home Sessions. We are hanging out in close proximity again in community as we love to do at Numa Life. And we're excited to continue our series, Living the Just Life. This is week number four. And we have the privilege to share a little bit of the word with you today. And our theme for today, we're going to be focusing on not only seeing, um, but engaging with people that are different to us, not only as Jesus does, but also treating these people with dignity, worth, and value. And this is how we're going to explain or model um, living the just life. So before we head into the scripture for today, we're going to give a little bit of background. Babe, you want to 
tell them where we're going to yes, be heading today? Of course. So imagine you are watching Netflix and <laughs> it's a preview, huh? Yeah. Like previously in the Bible. Nice. So Jesus. His first miracle was when he turned water into wine. Mm -hmm. Wow, right? Like, and then that's when his ministry started, right? And he ministered throughout uh, the, the places and different people got saved and lives were changed, right? As he ministers and people were being born again and being saved, the Pharisees had an issue. They always had an issue. We always have that one person who always have an issue, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the Pharisees had an issue and because they, they thought that Jesus was baptizing people more than John. And so they're like, who is this person who is becoming super popular than the person that we know, you know? But it wasn't Jesus actually who was baptizing the people. It was his disciples. Jesus was baptizing with the Holy Spirit. Sure, babes. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the reason for that, I think, why we see Jesus not baptizing with water is that it would have been controversial. It would have been maybe those people who were baptized by Jesus himself feeling like they are of a higher value mm -hmm. than those who were baptized by the disciples. So that's why perhaps we see in scripture that he refrains from that. But one thing that he notices, he notices that the hatred, the jealousy of the Pharisees is getting to a point where it's now endangering his life. And so Jesus decides then to move away from the region of Galilee where he was to move to a different region. And um, this is where he departs and he heads on his way. And uh, this is where we're going to pick up today with a tired Jesus and he's, he's weary, it's in the desert, it's hot. And um, this is where he's going to do something unheard of at the time. Let's dive into the word. Our scripture for today is from John 4 from verse 7 till 12. And it reads, if you're reading from the NLT translation, Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If only you knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? And Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon be thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will be thirsty, will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, she said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again and I'll never have to come here to get water. Jesus says to her, go get your husband. And she responds, I, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. For you have five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. So Jesus has this encounter with the Samaritan woman. Now, to give you a little bit of understanding about the dynamics between uh, the Samaritans and the Jews. So basically, Israel, as we all know, came from Jacob, um, who was the father. He had 12 sons. And they then, out of, the, out of these 12 sons came the 12 tribes of Israel, forming the nation that is known as Israel. Mm -hmm. And it was one nation for a time. Then after a while, things started to happen and the nation got split into two. The northern side, whose capital was Samaria, then the southern side, whose capital was Jerusalem. And so as Israel came under attack 
Um, over time, there were people that came and invaded. The Babylonians came and invaded um, in Israel and took them captive. And a part, a portion of the northern side was left. The other, the southern half was carried off into exile. And so this portion that was left then started interacting with the Babylonians because they came with their idol gods and the Samaritans started worshipping, the, the Jews that were left started worshipping these idols as well and there were some intermarriages that started to happen and there were some, you know, some issues. And so after a long time in exile, the, Israel, the Israelites who had been captured then returned back to try and be, rebuild their country and they come back and find, you know, the, their cousins that they left. And now they've become intertwined with the Babylonians. And now there's this issue of, no, but how can you marry these people that oppressed us? And no, you are not Israelites anymore. And so this is how we find that the Samaritans come into the, <laughs> into the timeline. And no doubt now there's this beef between the Jews, the Samaritans. And it goes on for a very, very long time. And this sounds very familiar um, to us as we were reading it. Yeah. This story sounded very familiar as to, I mean, myself, I'm from Zimbabwe. Yeah. And my wife, Blue, is South African. She is Tosa. And um, in many circles, that in itself, our relationship of being together, would be seen as something that's sort of uh, odd or controversial or yeah. there are varying opinions um, yeah. on it. And Blue actually has had a very interesting upbringing with regards to different uh, people of, of, from different nations and how they come into the country. And yeah, I don't know if you yeah, want to share. So, thank you, love. So mm. as, as, as my husband has shared, <laughs> so it, the, I find this quite interesting just to see the, the divide, you know, and God, God's intention is for us to be one and united, right? Mm. But we are so corrupted, right? Our hearts are corrupted. We, we seek for different things. And so we will end up doing things that fulfill us. And, you know, we do all these things. So when I look at the story, it just really reminds me of how I grew up as a child. I remember my mom telling us a story, right? Um, my mom was a single mother. Um, and for a very long time, I've been always curious and wanting to understand, like, where is that? What's happened there? And all of that. And so my mom will explain that, no, um, you know, my, my, your father's family never really wanted to accept me. I thought, hmm, what do you mean? Why didn't they want to accept you? And she uh, continued explaining and she said, because I was different, because I was light skinned and also because I looked colored. And when I told them I'm closer, they didn't believe me. And so when I heard you, they were like, are you sure this is your child? Because she does not look like Mm, she can be trusted. So mm. there was already prejudices towards my mom because they didn't trust her because she came from a different place, from a different area, right? Imagine that. So now here we are, we are born into that kind of a complicated situation. And I'm just like, my goodness, like we have to fight this fight. So fast forward, we go and live with my mom's family. When we get to my mom's family, guess what happens? We are not accepted there. Why? Because my dad is not Tosa. And as a child, we are standing there and thinking, do I belong? Do I even have dignity? When I look at myself, what am I? Who am I? Where am I going? Who am I going to interact with? So because of that background, it made me wonder you know why are you why are you coming from a different background what's happening why are you coming from a different country why are you different from me so my why just grew and i was hungry and hungry and then i had opportunities to interact with diverse people i remember my first encounter of a diverse group where there was a white person indian colored and of course myself there and i struggled guys <laughs> this is so funny when i think about it now I, I used to struggle even speaking English because it was not something that at home we practice a lot. So now here I am in this diverse group and there's a German white girl who's looking at me and she actually reminded me that I didn't speak to her for six months. Because why? In my head, we don't make friends with white people. Mm -hmm. White people, my mom works for a white person and I go, sorry ma'am, no ma'am, yes ma'am. So she, she was confused as to... 
why is this black girl not talking to me? I'm looking at the Indian, they sound different and like, I don't want to be, and I'm like, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah. So I was confused and in, those, in that moment, as a Samaritan woman speaking to Jesus, who is different from her and she's mm -hmm. just like, but who are you? We don't belong, mm -hmm. you don't belong here. I find myself exactly in the same situation, but yet again, God made an opportunity for me to be in a diverse group to now understand and also inform my mind so then that I can be able to go home and inform my parent, my siblings, so that they also are informed and also their prejudice can go down mm -hmm. and understand and accept people for who they are, not because of how they sound, of how they eat or different types of food. So I had a privilege really that God has allowed me to be in those spaces and I've always been, and even in my workspace, I burn with just informing people, come together and let's share our differences. Mm -hmm. You never know what I have, you know, we can trade, who knows? <laughs> And isn't that just beautiful um, how Jesus always has a way of taking a broken portrait and turning that into a wonderful work of art. Mm -hmm. And we all come from different backgrounds. We all have been raised differently. We all have had certain ideologies about different people from different cultures. And it's, it's very important that as we, as we see what Jesus did, because I believe that Jesus was very intentional. Everything that he did, everything that he said, was it, there was a reason and there was a purpose. There was always method to what seemed like madness and some of the things that he did. And not only does he, he see um, this woman and he intentionally gets her attention and starts to have this conversation with her. And even in having this conversation with her, he starts revealing his true self. He starts telling her about herself, something that only someone who knows this person yeah. intimately would be able to do. Mm -hmm. And who would know us better than Jesus himself. And so here comes this, this Jewish man speaking to this Samaritan woman. And we understand the, the, the place that women had um, at that particular time in society. Mm -hmm. And even thinking about that starts to make this dynamic really, really a bold statement that Jesus made. And this is why it's even included in scripture mm -hmm. in that he sees this, he, he, he decides to reveal himself, to reveal who he is to this woman who is looked down upon, to this woman who people are, are, are really like thinking, no, this is not enough. Or this person yeah. is, is you, can't, you can't speak to this person or we can't talk to each other. And it makes it, it, it he really starts to, 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 to engage with her and to open up himself. And I start to think about how, man, that, that would have been seen as, as radical. Mm -hmm. How that would have been seen as, man, there's more reason for us to dislike him. Mm -hmm. But what he actually was doing was he was beginning the reconciliation. He was beginning to bridge the gap. After a thousand years of bickering and back and forth, yeah. he starts to build this bridge. And so as we think about living the just life and as Jesus calls us to live the just life, is he not calling us as well to be bridge builders? Yes. Is he not calling us as well to start thinking about how do we think about people who are different to us? How do we treat people who are different to us? How do we see people who are different to us and how do we engage with them? Mm. And in, 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 such, in a country like, like South Africa, with such a divided history and such a diverse nation where there's all these different tribes and there are people of different colors and different tongues, isn't it also such a great opportunity for us as God's people to start to model living the just life by treating those who are different to us? Those perhaps because of past injustices we have developed certain feelings towards or those people that we have told ourselves that we will never ever have conversations with this person. We will yeah. never ever have interactions with these people. Yeah. Who are those people in our lives? And are, are we starting then to see how Jesus is calling us mm. to sit at the well? Whatever the world represents in 2021, guys, it could be a coffee shop. Yep. It could be a taxi terminus. Um, you could be chilling out in the wild. I know we like to hike. Table Mountain, yeah. um, and even wherever we may find ourselves, yeah. to be people who are focused on bridge building 
and beginning to see and treat people that are different to us yeah. with dignity and worth. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I moved to South Africa when I was 14 years old. I uh, left Zimbabwe. I'd been in Zimbabwe my whole life. I'd never been to any other place. So for me, the world was Zimbabwe, my little place where I lived with, with my family and friends. So moving now to a completely different country um, and where they speak a different language, where they use a different currency, it was such a big adjustment for me. Um, I'm the last born in my family, so you know us lasties, we like to latch on to mom and dad. Um, so I had to leave, I had to leave mom and dad. And so when I came here, I was first introduced to the idea, the notion that um, I'm black and what that, what that means. And not only am I black, but I'm a foreign national who happens to be black. And um, I found myself fortunately at a Christian school and a place that was a safe haven, a, safe, a place that uh, played a big part in the foundation of my faith and me coming to Christ. Um, and even though this place was such a beautiful place for growth, this was also the place where I started to discover that, man, what does it mean to be black? Because everybody in Zimbabwe looks like me. Okay? The majority of people in Zimbabwe are, are black, like me. So the, the, the idea, the notion of that being different never came, never came to mind in a tangible sense. So I'm sitting in this classroom where there are white individuals, there are colored individuals, and for the first time I'm starting to be told that, you know, no, but you're black. Sure. So we can't, we can't, we can't always like, you can't be in that circle, you can't be in our, in our circle because... First of all, you're foreign. We don't even know what language you speak. And yeah, you're, you're different. And so around 2009, um, if you're old enough to remember, that was around the same time that xenophobia was really at its peak um, in South Africa. And it's crazy that at that same time, I had a classmate. His name was um, Asemahle. He's still a very good friend of mine. And... He walked towards me and he sat next to me and he said, hey man, you and me, we're going to be homies. Sure. And so at a time when there's massive like violence between our brothers and sisters, our Kosa and Zulu and, and black South African brothers um, and sisters, where there was this great divide, mm -hmm. where there was an issue that foreign nationals are coming into South Africa, stealing our jobs, stealing our girls. Um, <laughs> and all our opportunities. <laughs> I found friendship in, in Asimal. Yeah. And God was using him to reconcile what was happening out there where I would feel scared, sure. where I would feel terrified, that I, I, I cannot speak to a local South African black brother or sister. And to this day, we're, we're still friends. And so... I'm amazed that there's so much beauty and there's so many layers um, into this passage of scripture. There's so many ways that we could interpret it and see it. But the way I see it is Jesus intentionally goes into a place where there was so much hurt and pain and there was so much division and he begins to, to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. And so as we read on, you begin to see that this woman then goes back to her village and imagine the way yeah. she's going back to the village because yeah. it, she's being noticed, as you're saying, baby. Yeah. Like she's being noticed. It's like the person that I, 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 would, I can't imagine me speaking to a Jew. Yeah. But this person laid his Jewishness aside. Mm -hmm. And he was like, different an hour. Expert with you, you know? And. You know, and this person is, is just ministering. Yeah. Ne? Ministering into her life and pouring into her life and just affirming her, right? And I, I can imagine running back to the village, brah, yeah. like, hi, guys, <laughs> guys, come, come hear the news. Yeah. You know, there's this man, he's, he's the Messiah. He told me everything that I do. Yeah. And I'm sure they're like, ah, ah, there she comes again, that one, that yeah. one that steals me. 
mm, I wonder whose man has she stolen now. Oh, mm, mm, mm. yeah. You know? <laughs> so imagine the excitement because really when you are seen and you, when you feel, you know, my dignity, my respect, it, it does something to you. Mm. It turns your situation around. It mm. turns your mindset around. You want to share the good news. Mm. And that's what happens. And I'm yeah. sure she was just like, hey, hey, what's that? Come, come. Hey, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So he... She goes back and she, she's there and she's explaining as vividly as Blue has Dang. put it. And, um, you know, she, she gets there. And these people, it says in the word, they all come back and they come to meet him. And they say that now we have believed because we have heard it directly from you. Not because of what she said, yeah. but because of what you said. And is it possible in 2021 that some people will be brought home to Christ because of our stories, because of an encounter with you, mm. because of a conversation with you. Is that something that's going to draw them back to say, okay, let me go, let me go here. Let me go check out what, what this person is saying. Because I mean, we all know her. We all know him. But still, yep. still, man, this whole village and Jesus being Jesus, spends time, a few days with this village, with this community that's been on the fringes of society. God put on the clothing of flesh and went and spoke to this part of society that everyone had said had turned their, that put them on the edges of society. And so part of living the just life as we've been sharing um, all our messages and as we've, as we've been communicating about what that looks like and what that means, I think it all starts with, with a step. It all starts with the step of inviting people into our circles and opening doors for people. People that are different, people that don't always look like us, people that force us to get out of our comfort zone. Because yeah. there's beauty and there's growth in that. There's a stretching that happens that is only going to benefit and grow us. And there's a reason why we're all different. There's a reason why God allows us to be different, to be free, to choose him or to not choose him. He gives us that freedom because there's beauty. There's beauty in diversity. There's beauty in uniqueness. And we each carry this uniqueness. Each different to one another, myself different to blue. Yeah. And somehow in the melting pot of God and what he does, it all comes together. And so can we live the just life together in 2021? Numa family, as you're sitting next to who you're sitting next to in home sessions on a comfy couch, don't fall asleep, we're still here. Uh, can we live the just life together? Can we commit as a family, as a community, to take these steps and to start breaking the molds, to breaking the prejudices that we've had built and programmed into us from very young ages? And can we start to start bridging, bridging that gap? So in the Bible, there's even a story that's told as part of a parable. It talks about the Good Samaritan. Before reading and preparing for this message and understanding really the dynamics of Samaritans, I didn't realize how controversial that was. The Good Samaritan. <laughs> Because in the eyes of Jewish people, there was nothing good about Samaritans. Sure. So, how daring then is it that Jesus tells the story of the good Samaritan? Something that's been called terrible. Something that's been called all sorts of things. He decides to call it good. Yeah. And so what is God calling good in our lives today? things that or areas in our lives ourselves that we have decided are we're never going to open this door yeah. never going to speak to this person or this group of people this is how they are this is how i see them this is how i choose to see them mm. how are we going to allow god to start opening up our hearts to that change and so, as we draw near to the end of our time together, 
and we're going to pray. My lovely wife is going to pray for us and help us live the just life. Mm. I have a few words that I would like to share. And we treat people unfairly with less value and dislike them because they're not like us. Mm -hmm. This difference sometimes makes us uncomfortable. We get threatened by their presence and the potential loss of opportunities for ourselves and our families. Mm -hmm. But we are called to be like Jesus, Christian, Christ-like. That's the calling that's on each and every one of our lives. Yeah. We're called to live the just life and to follow his example of love. Follow his example of grace. Mm -hmm. Follow his example of acceptance. And of course, this is easier said than done. But it can be done. If we all make the intentional decision to start today. If we all make the intentional decision to say, I'm going to begin by inviting that coworker who always sits by themselves. I want to hear their story. Yeah. I don't want to get anything out of it. I just want to hear what, what they're about. Get a different perspective. And it doesn't take a grand gesture. It doesn't take a massive showing. No, it only starts with a hello. I see you. I would like to engage and talk to you. Yeah. And so I'm going to ask that my lovely wife pray for us and that God would help us in this area. God would help myself in this area because I too, I too fall short in this area. So, babe, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, before I pray, you know, um, as, as we were doing this and, and I was listening and um, we, we also, as he mentioned it, we also need to really repent, you know, every time laying our, our lives and our thoughts and, you know, when you see that a person who sounds different and instead of going, oh, but just go, okay, you're different, you know, and, and, and move towards them. Just having that um, loving your neighbor as yourself, that's, that's it's a command, you yeah. know, and we need to practice that. So, and also if you know you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, we have a team here mm -hmm. um, that can uh, walk with you, pray with you. Please do send us a WhatsApp message with your name because we would love for you to be part of the community. We wouldn't want you to just be sidelined, you know, or maybe you've had a relationship with God, but maybe you've been mistreated. Uh, maybe you felt different and not welcomed. You know, this is an opportunity again to reconnect and just, you know, ask yourself, well, how do I, I want to model my relationship with Christ? So we have that opportunity. Please don't hesitate to just do that as we pray for you guys. So Father God, we thank you yeah. for who you are in our lives. Yes, Lord. Because you are such a faithful Father. Lord, teach us how to be like you, Father God. Mm. Show us how to love without condition, Father God. Not to count what I did, how I did it, Father God, but just to be gracious, to listen with love and yes, care, Lord. Father God to see people as you see them and father god to worship together in the family and community to be connected father god because that's what you called us to do father god mm -hmm. so father we thank you for this message father yes, pray lord. father for whosoever who is near and far god almighty as they listen jehovah i pray that god yes, you turn situations around father god what is impossible with us lord it is possible with you so lord we pray this morning yes, that lord. father anything that we we were trying to do with our own strength to Remember and know 
that we can do things through you and lean on you. So we thank you, Jesus. And those that have accepted you as their Lord and Savior, Father, we rejoice and we say, yay, welcome to the family. May they be blessed as they are connected. And I pray this, Father God, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. So thank you so much for joining us today for Numa Home Sessions. Yeah. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege to be able to share the word of God with you. My wonderful wife, thank you, Babas. Thank you so much, appreciate you. Um, but don't, don't go anywhere. Uh, we have some announcements coming up. Hello everybody. I just quickly want to remind you that we've got church in person every first and third Sunday of the month. This is where we meet up at Cavendish Square at the Stir Kinney Core and Kinney Number no. 2. Um, so please um, join us there every first and third Sunday. And then the second and fourth Sunday is when we meet up at homes. We meet up in groups of 10 and no more because of the restrictions. Please visit our website to sign up for that. We would love to see you there. And then today, this afternoon at 3 p.m., we are having a NUMA Live DNA session. So what that is, is for you guys to ask any questions about the church that you might have. What is our vision? What is our mission? Where can you get connected? All those kind of questions you will get answered this afternoon. So please join us in a, on a Zoom meeting. Um, DM us, um, check on our socials, go on our website, see the contact details there and let us know so that we can send you the link. And then another cool thing on Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 28th, we are having our monthly prayer session also via Zoom. And what we're going to do a little bit different this time is we're also going to have a little discussion about our series that we just went through, um, Living a Just Life. And we would love to hear some input from you and uh, also love to really just pray with you and pray as a community about this. I quickly want to share the offering message with you guys. Um, in Psalm 19 verse 7 in the New Living Translation, uh, the word says, The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. And then in another translation, it says, uh, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, restoring the soul. So we can really see that being obedient, there's a healing that pl takes place when we're obedient. There's a, a newness that comes when we, when we do what the Lord says. And I want to encourage you that when the Lord says, bring your tithes and your offerings to your place of worship, that you would um, be encouraged by that rather than be discouraged by it. Um, because there's really a blessing in it for you. There's really a healing that's, that can take place in your heart and in your life and in your finances and in your relationships when you obey the Word of God. And um, please pray with me. Father, I thank you so much for your Word. Thank you that it brings life. Thank you that it is alive and active and it does never return void. Father, I pray that you would go with us. I pray that when we look at our salaries and we take that tithe cut and we have doubts, that, that you would come in um, and Holy Spirit, that you would make us courageous and build our faith and that, that we will see your faithfulness in our lives as we step out in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. So banking details will pop up on the screen if you've missed it. Um, please feel free to check it out on our website as well. And then you guys must have a fantastic.